Hey, I'm Alon Rubin. Right now we're going to do a deep dive into the session for my song, Chaos in Motion. A little bit about the song before we dive in. It was recorded at Music Friend Studios, same place I did Talk, Talk, Talk. It's a great little studio owned by a good friend, Carlos de la Garza. He actually engineered this, Talk, 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 as well as another song we did that day, which is currently entitled Living in the Underworld. I'm sure it'll come out this coming year. But anyway, we had a lot to do that day. I wanted to record Chaos in Motion as well as Living in the Underworld in about a four to five hour period and I did all of the basic tracking there, drums, bass, some guitar, some piano, brought the rest over here to my little home studio where I did all the lead vocals, backups, other guitar overdubs, some percussion, whatever else completed the track. Once I finished it here, I then sent all the files over to Aaron Rubin for mixing and pretty much what we have here is a song that leans a little bit simpler in terms of production. Pretty raw in regards to the instrumentation. We have drums, bass, and vocal for the majority of the song. Guitars come in for the choruses. Lots of backup vocals and harmonies per usual. But it's a much simpler song, especially in comparison to, say, something like Talk, 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 which is more expansive in terms of structure, production just in general. So this song was a lot of fun for me to write and record. It's actually the only song I can think of to date where I actually came up with the vocal melody first. I, I vividly recall walking down the street, humming a melody and thinking, you know what, that's pretty good. I could already kind of picture what the chord progression would be for at least the verse, which was a chord to relative minor, or for you uh, Roman numeral analysts out there, a one to six progression. And put it down as a voice note, brought it back here, sat at the piano, and started working on the song. So to me, this one is a, a combination of a few things. It's definitely got a bit of an instant karma vibe in terms of the shuffle. To me, there's a bit of Motown in terms of the structure and the harmonies. And then, of course, I love to layer on harmonies, in which case some of my biggest influences would be Queen, Beach Boys, and this one we'll see in the second pre-chorus. But anyway, that's the overall gist and vibe of Chaos in Motion. So why don't we go ahead and dive into it. I think two things that really give this song its identity are the drum sound and the bass sound, which are the two things that remain consistent from the very beginning to the very end of the song. The drum sound is intentionally raw. When I did a rough mix of this, I sent it to Aaron and said, obviously you're going to do a better version of this but it was very compressed and it's, it was very harsh. And the idea I wanted was for it to sound garagey. And I mean that in a very literal sense. The garage that I grew up playing in was typical concrete, no treatment. And I just recall the drums sounding very live, very loud and pretty harsh. Eventually we would soundproof the garage to avoid numerous calls to the police from neighbors. Uh, thanks guys. But that's what I wanted for the drums, and then the bass, I'm never afraid to really pile on the fuzz there. So let's listen to the first verse, and then we'll kind of dive into things piece by piece. So that's intro and verse one. Drums, bass, lead vocal, and some backup. So here's the drum sound by itself. It's nothing crazy, but it is more raw, especially in comparison to say, talk, talk, talk. Then we have the bass. And as you can see here, the bass track is seems to be four tracks and then further processing through the bass bus. And I also would like to point out that this is a committed session. So I've committed, baked in the plugins to all the auto tracks. So these are the final tracks, but we're not going to be diving into plugins specifically. Anyway, so we have a bass DI, a dirty DI, 
a bass reamp, the original bass amp, and like I said, further processing on the bus. So we can kind of dive in here. I'll ungroup them. Bass DI is very plain. Definition there in the note. The dirty DI is really where the bulk of the sound is coming from, and that's this. So we mix the two up, we get the dirt, a little bit of clarity from the DI. Now let's go to the original bass amp, which is the following. Subby. So the two DIs plus the amp. And let's add this reamp on top of that. So further low end extension there, and then we have the overall bus. So that is what's making that bass sound. And while it may seem like overkill to have four tracks of bass and further processing on the bus, we have to keep in mind that for a good portion of the song, the bass is carrying everything. So it really did need to fill out a lot more space than say a bass that was surrounded by a couple of other guitar tracks, maybe piano, keyboard. So that's what we have there. We then of course have a lead vocal and some backups. So let's listen to that really quickly. I'm running around, don't know where I'm going. So I'd like to point out that these backup vocals, these harmonies, I wanted a very Michael Jackson treatment of them. And what I mean by that is the singer's in front and then the backup vocals are right here on either side of you. And I associate that with a Michael Jackson sound. Not that the melody or anything sounds like Michael Jackson in particular, but like the way you make me feel, for example, listen to that. Those vocals come in right here, and it's a quality I like, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of have this garagey vibe, but then have these very pristine vocals pop in. So that leads us into the pre chorus. Pre chorus, we have an introduction of the piano for the first time and additional backups. We have a harmony that comes in with the lead vocal, and then we just have a pad of ooze, which fill out the sound and really outline the chord progression. So let's listen to the pre-chorus. So let's listen to the piano, lead vocal, and all of the backups. Uh, of all the things that matter, should they mean this much? I talk about it, or forget it, too many things at once. So with a very simple two chord verse, we then start expanding the song harmonically in the pre-chorus. We get to this fun little drum break, and that leads us into verse two. So to keep verse two feeling like it's chugging along and growing, I add a falsetto vocal, which is doubling my lead up an octave, and claps, and that kind of helps fill it out and feel like it's progressing. So drum break into verse two. Sometimes what I need is an endless slumber Where all of my thoughts finally lost my number Out of reach, don't know when I'll be back The deeper the trance of myself make problems I'm losing a game that I never rise to play Every day won't it just go away That's verse two. Pre-chorus two is the same as pre-chorus one with the exception of backup vocals that expand a bit on what's there on what was there before so we have the the ooze that are kind of outlining the chord progression and then i kind of tip my hat to some brian wilson beach boys influence and here's what i mean by that of all the things that matter should they mean this much talk about it i'll forget it things 
So that's the second pre-chorus. Slightly evolved backup vocals. We skip a drum break here to just cut to the chase and get to the chorus. So that is the following. So that is the chorus to Chaos in Motion. Very sort of classic pop with a bit of power in there. We hear the introduction of guitars for the first time in this song. We have a jangly rhythm guitar, which is very Lennon, All My Love. And if you listen to that song and pay attention, you hear a consistent triplet or sextuplet guitar that he's going all the time. And then some very kind of Brian May, just big single note guitars. DI fuzz, something I love to do, and the guitars themselves sound like this. So, those are some of the new elements that come into the chorus, and I'd like to play you the piano with the lead vocal and all the backups, actually. This is the sort of thing that I would be singing along to at the piano and picturing in terms of future production with how I want to fill it out with harmonies and backup vocals. And I'm specifying harmonies versus backups because... For all intents and purposes, the lead vocal here is a three-part harmony that's consistent the entire time, all the way through. And the backups kind of come in to emphasize certain lines. So with the piano, which I'd also like to point out here, is mono as opposed to a stereo piano in the rest of the song. And the reason why we did that is because with the addition of all the guitars and the backup vocals and just having more frequencies that are sharing the same kind of playing field, the stereo piano was getting lost, so we made it mono, and that seemed to kind of poke out through and live in its own space alongside the guitars. So here we have piano, lead vocals, and backups with harmony. Chaos and motions got me feeling down. Though I know it always evens out, it's got me turned around. In motion. So there you have it. I generally like to triple or quadruple track each part of the harmony. So I'll usually say double a lead vocal. Each harmony will have three to four tracks. So if we're looking at a, a, a harmony or stack of vocals that has three parts, that'll be anywhere from nine to 12 tracks. So it can really get dense, but it it adds to this character of a very lush sound. So check this out. Feeling down. It's evens out. It's, it's got, got me turned around. It's chaos in motion. So a lot of vocals going on here. And the chorus leads us straight into the bridge. Now I'd like to point out that bridges are often my favorite parts of songs and my favorite parts of songs to write. And that's because we don't really have to focus on repetition. The bridge is there to pull you away from what you've been listening to. It's an opportunity to tie up what's going on lyrically. But musically, I love stepping out, going somewhere else, and finding a way to bring it back to what we're expecting. You're obviously always expecting a return when you go into a bridge. So... No repetition here. The bridge is very clearly in two halves. In the first half of the bridge, we'll hear that things are far more melancholy. That jangly piano with a bit of echoes going on there. I think the the Motown vibe, at least in my estimation, is being uh, laid on uh, fairly thickly there. And the second half of the bridge then goes to 
a more optimistic chord progression that brings us up and pulls us back into the chorus. So let's go ahead and listen to the bridge. My heart is beating fast, my pulse it gets so high. But when I think about it, it's in my mind's eye. Tied up imagination, set loose in the sky. So there you go. Constant harmony. We have a more melancholy first half of the bridge, and then as we get to the second half, things start picking up. They're moving upward. They're building. They're feeling more major. A tambourine comes in to add to the pleasant vibe of the bridge. Then we find ourselves at a drum break and back into a final chorus. So here is the, the bridge in its uh, plainest form. My heart is beating fast, my pulse, it gets so high But when I think about it, it's in my mind's eye Tied up imagination, set loose in the sky should also point out that we have claps that come in on every beat here in the bridge and that's kind of adding to the momentum even though the song feels like it's being pulled down a little bit so let's listen to the bridge again let's keep in mind the claps on every beat from the beginning the tambourine that comes in on the second half which helps us feel like we're picking up my heart is beating fast my pulse it gets so high but when I Also had some fun guitars here chugging along a little bit. More DI fusses, and then I'm sure you could hear that very subtle, reverby, picky guitar. It's almost acting like as much of a percussion instrument as it is a harmonic instrument. You don't really realize it's there, but if I were to mute it, you would think that something was missing. I like to often fill things out with a palm muted, picky sound, because it just adds to the rhythm, and then the actual notes that I'm playing just kind of help fill out the, the frequency spectrum there. So then we get to our last chorus after this drum break. And this is a double chorus. Chorus two here is the same as chorus one. And then when we get to the double, I'll point out a few subtleties that I add to the guitars, which make the chorus feel like it's constantly climbing before obviously the song comes to its conclusion. So why don't we go from about halfway, since we've already heard the chorus, and I will point out what I'm talking about in chorus three. <laughs> So very subtle. It's never fun to repeat things verbatim because you get sick of them quickly. But as I said, a slight change to the guitars here. With those kind of ring outs on the single note guitar tracks in the first chorus and the second chorus, for the third, I then decided to get into that triplet rhythm. So now we have a bass that is chugging along in triplets or sextuplets, the guitar which is joining, and we kept the tambourine from the bridge running through the chorus. So you have a lot of this sextuplet momentum, and 
That sounds like this. We're coming out of the second chorus into the third, and you'll hear how the guitar picks up and adds to it. So that's a lot of stuff. A lot of different parts playing the same rhythm, but that adds to the energy, the power, the momentum. Of course, with the drums and piano keeping everything else anchored. We then come to our final little bit here. And we wrap the song up nicely with a neat little bow of vocal harmony ooze. So that is Chaos in Motion. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Go listen to it, stream it, and thanks for watching. Have a good one.